Hi, Dave from DJ Direct here, and today I'm taking a look at ah, the Laneley Multi Glow Trotter Camera Kit Backpack. So here I am with the Laneley Multi Glow Trotter Camera Backpack, and one thing I like to first note about it is it is actually made entirely of nylon. So you have all this nylon texture here with a TPU coating. Now the benefit of this is that it's actually a very waterproof sort of backpack you get in here and that TPU coating on it is sort of like a plastic layer so the water and oils and any other sort of liquids will sort of just roll off it. So you can throw all sorts of water, splash on it which is why I'm perfectly comfortable honestly just sitting right here next to some waves. If it splashes onto this backpack it doesn't matter because nothing inside will get wet. So this is a great bit of security for your camera gear. The nylon isn't the only sort of fabric that's on the outside of this backpack. You also have this sort of rubberized vinyl here. So you have a very waterproof sort of base here. So if you're say walking waist deep in some water and it's splashing on the base, you have that extra bit of protection. It also means I can place this down in a sort of puddle or wet surface and not have to worry about any sort of liquids or well, water, let's just say water. I don't have to worry about any sort of water sort of seeping in through the backpack from the bottom. On the other sides, this rubberized sort of vinyl is also consistent on the zippers. So what you actually have here is it's actually quite weather sealed here. So you don't have to worry again about any water or any sorts of liquid sort of seeping in through the backpack via the zippers, which is probably the more common area that liquids do seep through. The teeth are completely covered by this rubberized vinyl. It's very sealed off. It does, of course, make it a little bit more um, difficult to sort of unzip the bag sometimes or zip it up because it's a bit more rigid like that. But I'd much rather have that extra bit of protection than sort of that extra bit of speed opening the backpack up. The zipper here is sort of a metal zipper with a nylon piece of cord wrapped around it and a little bit of leather to tie it off. Personally, I prefer if it was just sort of a nylon cord that wrapped around the zipper part here, but it's a very sort of sturdy bit of zipper. And yeah, it's a zipper. What more can you ask for? Now the interior of this backpack is a different story. It's not made of nylon. It is made of a sort of cotton, which is good for the Velcro sort of panels that you want to attach inside the backpack. So you of course don't have that weatherproof there. But if you are worried about the protection of the fabric here, you do have an extra, extra layer of protection inside the backpack, which is the form of bit of mesh here so this will sort of capture any chunks of dirt and some of the moisture it won't catch everything it's got some holes in it obviously but it's nice to have that little bit of extra reassurance that your gear is well protected and if you don't think this backpack's waterproof look at this So for those of you that are curious, this is how the backpack looks when it's worn. I'm about 5'8 on a dry day, 5'9 on a moist one, and this is how the backpack sort of fits on me. The nylon material isn't the only thing that's special about the exterior of this bag. When you spin it around, you do actually have a molded sort of setup on the back here. Now, personally I prefer a sort of air mesh as that allows a lot more greater airflow and you want that when you're traveling around with a backpack, especially in Australia where it gets very hot, your back's gonna get very sweaty. So you want something with a bit of airflow to it. So what we have is these sort of raised ridges on the back, which mean that the air does actually sort of travel through these sort of canals here and sort of gives you a bit of airflow, a bit of breathability as well. On the back straps, you also have a sort of air mesh which enables a bit of breathability in your shoulders as well. On the top of the bag, you also have a zipper that if you unzip it, you can basically quickly access whatever is your most primary camera. So you can have your most important camera at the top and you just unzip the top and take it out. On the side of the bag, you have two pockets for water bottles. Personally, I found that it couldn't fit something substantial like two liters. So usually I just use this pocket for something like my phone. Now these straps, which are always important, are these sort of adjustable nylon straps. You of course do have a little clip at the front here that you can adjust as well. And in terms of the waist strap, now I'm, with some bags, at least the ones I've worked in, it's a more of a padded and larger bit of, um, I guess,
guess, equipment that you have on your camera bag where this padded sort of waist strap that sort of fits over your gut. But with this, you do sort of have a more of a subtle nylon strut here. So some people might find this not as secure, but it is nylon, it is rather sturdy, and if you adjust the straps right, it will fit on perfectly. And honestly, you always do want to have some form of waist support when it comes to carrying a camera kit around as you really do not want to have all the weight on your shoulders. You want to have it sort of shared by the waist, if not primarily carried by the waist, so you don't end the day with a sore back. On the base here, you do also have some straps where you can sort of strap in your tripod, which I've got set up right now. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the um, tripod sort of hold here. For some reason, I just couldn't get it to be firmly to stay tight in there. But in terms of walking around with this backpack, I did actually find it very comfortable. It's, of course, very breathable. It's got a great amount of support to it. So it is very comfortable to carry around. And I didn't end the day incredibly sweaty carrying this backpack, despite it being, well, incredibly warm like today. Okay, so now let's actually get into the inside of this backpack here. Now, as I already noted, it does not open directly from the back. Instead, it opens from the front here. One of the things you will notice is you do have this sort of, these pockets here. These are like some sort of transparent looking bits of pockets, which will be good for when you have to have your vitals that you need to quickly grab on hand. I don't like it when I can't necessarily see within the pockets, so it's good to have the bit of that literal transparency. It means I can put something in there, lift the lid up, and immediately know that I can see what I need to see. You also have this little name tag here. Now, I'm not sure if that's paper and I can erase anything off it, but I'm not gonna do that as I don't wanna currently ruin this backpack. Ah. This kit can actually pack one camera and apparently up to 10 lenses or 10 lens accessories. But I reckon a real test of a camera kit bag is when you pack it with a whole lot of oddly shaped and heavier gear. So I've got like a bunch of Sigma Art lenses here. These are very heavy sort of lenses. They are quite uncomfortable to sort of carry around in the backpack. In terms of the internals, what you will find is you will have at least up to nine sort of panels inside these little pins right here and you do have some longer side ones as well. Another thing is you do want to sort of make use of these little rubber straps here as they kind of do help to sort of catch your gear so if it falls out it does get caught by something. Of course you do have the mesh here but it's always good to have these. I do find it unfortunate that we didn't have more of these as honestly of all the lenses I've got in here, a lot of long lenses and long sort of camera bodies. It would have been nice to have more of these to sort of have the catch, but typically I am not going to have my kit sort of resting upright like this. Most of the time, I am going to have it laying flat on its back so I can sort of pick out what I need. So you get up to nine Velcro panels and two rubber straps, which you can use to sort of hold your gear in. They are fairly sturdy. They're a bit like a sort of hard cardboard foam, so that's always good. I'm not a fan of the color. I'm of course using the forest model, which has a dark green color. And I'm not a fan of dark internals inside a camera backpack as the gear itself is already dark and you do want to sort of be able to navigate your kit as easy as possible. And in darker situations, it is going to be kind of hard to sort of find the gear as you're running around with it. But you do have other colors. You've got the forest, you have the black, but you also have the khaki color and neutral color which the khaki and the neutral color are a lot more lighter on the inside, so they're a lot more easier to navigate. But let's be honest, dark green, black, these are just much cooler looking colors. So get the khaki and the neutral color for practicality and the dark green and the black for the ladies. So there you have it. That's the Langley Multi Globetrotter Camera Backpack. In terms of my own overall impressions, I do really like the look and design of this backpack. It's actually a very discreet design. It doesn't sort of scream camera kit backpack which is kind of good in a lot of situations when you want to keep a bit of a low profile about your camera kit it just looks like honestly just looks like a regular backpack and it's great and the fabric and design of it really does factor in that you're not going to just be taking this camera kit to like inside studios but to actually outside in the elements where it be wet dry or dusty i do also find it's a very comfortable bit of backpack you've got a great strap breathability in the back straps and of course the back here I did find that even though it's a really hot day today, 
that I'm not building up a whole lot of sweat around the areas where the backpack is pressed up right against me. It's actually quite a comfortable backpack. It is also a very large backpack. I can of course fit all sorts of differently sized lenses and cameras in here and can carry quite a lot more than I actually need to be honest, but it is great to have all those options with this camera kit. Honestly, I could even just go so far as to put a few bits of kit in there and then some essentials like water or protein bar, you know, some various sort of camping or hitchhiking or, you know, the thing that people do when they go outside. Oh, what's the word? What's the word? Trekking? Trekking? Bushwalking? I, I don't know. I, I don't go outside. That sh much should be obvious. Look at my skin. This is a great bag and I do kind of regret not getting this. I don't think it was out by the time I got given it, but it's a great kit and for someone that uses a lot of Sigma art lenses, this is a really good bag. It's very comfortable, it's great support, and of course it can fit the bloody dig lenses inside it. But let me know what you think of the backpack. Is there anything that you feel is missing from this backpack? Is there some upgrades in this backpack that you think are significant, at least to camera kit bags? Let me know in the comments below.